Cliffhanger movie review. Sly stars as Gabe, a part of a rescue patrol who unfortunately loses one person in an in a rescue attempt and he feels guilty about that. And that's pretty much his one defining characteristic in this entire movie. And don't worry if you accidentally forget that that's what happened because Stone will remind you every so often. Literally the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of the movie past the rescue attempt, every single line he has is regarding that. There's like, there's nothing else. Anyway, so he sort of gets out of the rescuing business, you know, and he hasn't climbed for months. And a team of thieves are, you know, hijacking this plane carrying I don't remember, 30 million dollars, a lot of money. And things don't go entirely as planned, and with the help of a very resilient agent and a remarkably accurate submachine gun, the jet that the thieves are on has to crash, and the three suitcases of money are, you know, lost somewhere around the mountain in which they had to crash. They're fine, by the way. They managed to find a nice, you know, ground, nice, nice flat surface to kind of slide past. You know, they can't fly again, but all of them are fine. Yeah, this is Hollywood. Now, the, they do have a tracking device to, you know, help them find the money, but they're not experienced mountain climbers, even though they did come unusually prepared for, and considering that they were expecting the in-air heist to go entirely as planned, I don't know why they brought explosives and other stuff that I really don't want to give away. But yeah, they, they did. I, I guess just in case, you know, be prepared and all that. So they fake a distress call and, you know, rescuers are dispatched. And since Stallone is in town, his ex-girlfriend, who doesn't blame him for what happened, tells him not to blame himself for what happened, and sends him up onto the mountain to rendezvous with the boyfriend of the person who, you know, died on the mountain, who does blame him for what happened, so that they can have a little conversation about blaming him for what happened, and they proceed to, you know, find the thieves, realize what's really going on, and Stallone soon gets away from them, and he's now trying to sabotage their plans, whilst the other one, played by Michael Rooker, I think that's his name, who's always fun to watch, is their hostage, and he abuses their incredible gullibility uh, all the time. I don't know, maybe they're distracted by how they're constantly infighting. You know, it's not just that the actual thieves are, you know, criticizing this one agent's mustache who betrayed the other agents. You know, it's not just that, they're actually constantly bickering. And true to 90s Hollywood action thriller, which this... This hits all the major cliches for a 90s Hollywood action thriller. And true to that, they are all obnoxious. 
there is not one likable thief among them, and really there aren't a lot of even mildly interesting character traits to any of the characters, really. I think the most defining character, or the, the most memorable trait, character trait, is actually that the pilot of the rescue helicopter likes to do very abstract art that other people don't like. I'm not kidding. So, the dialogue is just deliciously cliché and, yeah. Really, in a lot of ways, this is an entirely generic 90s action thriller. And, as such, it might have a charm of its own, but it actually does slightly reach above that because of a few things. One of those is that it's really exciting. It is a genuinely thrilling movie, you know. I guess you could even say that there are some scenes that have some suspense, but it's really, it's more about, you know, they're high up and it's dangerous, you know. It hits on several of these primal fears relating to nature, you know. There's height, there's cold, there's the fear of drowning, uh, fear of being eaten, you know, yeah, I think that just about covers it, but yeah, so, you know, and they actually do get kind of creative, which I'm not sure I was entirely expecting, you know, with something like this, you know, the with the title and the setting, obviously there's gonna be people hanging from high above and almost falling down and stuff like that, you know. But they actually do think of numerous mm, pretty plausible scenarios in which they, you know, a lot of the things that actually happen are not, there are some, there's some real overkill in this movie, but the various situations they end up in where someone is almost falling down or, you know, something in nature is almost killing someone, you can actually kind of follow how they end up in those situations and, you know, it's not always someone's stupidity that, you know, causes that situation to occur. It's also a movie that, you know, it, it doesn't really waste any time, you know, it spends, you know, the, the very beginning is exciting and thrilling, and then, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes pass without that much happening, not to say that the plot isn't, but, you know, there's character development, which is not that interesting, because, like I said, these are very one-note characters, and they're set up for the plot, and then the plot takes off, and something's constantly happening, you know, and, yeah, a lot of it is pretty cliched and dumb. There are some really useless surprises, like, this really isn't a spoiler, because it happened so early on, but there's... Okay, I'm not gonna give away the details, but basically, when the money is being stolen, there's a little bit of surprising going on with, you know, who's backstabbing who, or how, or some, you know, stuff like that, and it's really just there to throw you for a loop, and it, it has absolutely no effect on, no, no impact on anything whatsoever. Another thing is that the effects are really nice. You know, I don't know how much of this was actually done with stunt work, but <laughs> obviously it can't all have been, and you'll know what I mean if you watch the movie or if you already have. There's some stuff in this that they really couldn't do for real safely, and I'm taking my hat off for these guys. They really made it look real, you know, and it is, you know, the various dangers, the fights, the, you know, when someone has a gun trained on them, these sort of things, they are really intense. It's also very well shot, you know, it's the sort of thing where, you know, it's not difficult to make height seem scary. And I actually, I went into the movie, I mean, 
I have a fear of heights, so I stay away from the high places, you know, it's it's kind of just that logic, like, you know, if there's a shark, don't go to the beach, and hence Jaws is supposed to not be scary. But yet, Jaws and this are still scary, and it's because they really, you know, grip you. So you completely forget that these characters could just choose to stay away from the obvious danger, you know. I think... It's, it's also something that's evident from very early on. The very beginning has Stallone climbing a mountain. Why is he climbing a mountain? To make love to the mountain. He... You know, and, and the camera could just be trained on him. The camera could just follow him as he does that. But it does this sort of... It, it flies overhead, and no matter how you know, no matter how much progress he's making, th this isn't a very long sequence, if I might be making it sound like it is, no matter how far he climbs and how close he gets to relative safety, it keeps looking really dangerous and really creepy. I can't imagine how it must have been to watch this in the theater. You know, this is a movie that is made for a theater release, you know, which obviously it was, but you know, today you can't watch it in a theater. It was really made for, I you know, there's got to have been people screaming in the theater because it is just, even on a television, it is really tense. The acting is so-so, you know, this is not Stallone's best. And yeah, the rest, you know, Lithgow, you know, puts, puts energy into it. And he can't be a little entertaining as a bad guy. He's he's not completely hammy, and I, I think it's really mostly the writing that fails him, because, again, this villain just doesn't have many distinguishing qualities. I mean, he's this ex-government agent or something, so he's, like, smart. He's a strategist. And you can sort of see that in some of the stuff, and you can also kind of tell, you know, that's why he's able to really do this, you know, other than the betrayal of Mustache. It really is that he, you know, he's a smart one. You know, I guess that's why he's been able to elude Lundy for all those years. Also, apparently, Lieutenant Traxler from the first Terminator movie evidently rose in ranks because he's like a government agent in this or something and you know he's trying to figure out where the money went really slowly I don't know exactly why it takes him so long to you, you expect him to show up sooner than he does but yeah I suppose that pretty much does it but yeah it's Definitely worth at least one watch, you know, you can kind of tell that this is the guy who also did Die Hard 2, you know It's fun at least once and I would say this is more fun to watch than Die Hard 2 But yeah Pretty good action thriller Please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it